Welcome to ITTV for Form 4 Physics. The title of this lesson, Scientific Investigation. Sometimes around us, we see things and we don't know why they happen. What causes it to happen? How it happens? When we have this curiosity about something, we need to find out. And to find out, we need to do a scientific investigation. The method of scientific investigation. A process involves an integration of knowledge, skill and attitudes to develop scientific understanding. In order to do something like this, to have a scientific investigation, we need to first see a phenomena. When we see the phenomena, we need to think about the skills and techniques that we have that will allow us to investigate this phenomena. Scientific method for investigation. The process of investigation can be listed in five words. Observation, questioning, hypothesis, testing, and explanation. Observation. Science, no matter what the discipline, is rooted in observation. When a scientist notices a natural phenomenon, he will wonder how and why it happens. He may want to investigate. So it all begins with the observation, seeing a rainbow and wondering what causes it, observing waves by the seaside and wondering how does that happen. Once you've observed something, your curiosity will want to know the cause of that phenomena. Identify the problem. An observation, usually, often at the same time that the observation is made, leads to the formulation of a question. So you see something and then you have a question for it. But the most important thing here is that the question you have is a testable question, which means we can test your question through investigation. There is no point coming up with a question to which we cannot find an answer or we cannot test. So, very important, you have an observation and with that observation comes a testable question. Hypothesis. A hypothesis is established based on three possible sources. The scientist's own experiences and knowledge in the field, information that is available from the existing body of knowledge, scientific literature from other scientists, and make a best guess. So usually once you've observed the phenomena and you have a question that is testable, you come up with a hypothesis. The hypothesis may be based on things that you have done in your past life, investigations that you may have carried out. Or it may be based on a journal or an article you read by another fellow scientist. But if these are unavailable and your question, your testable question is new, right off the bat, never been tested be before. It means you have to make a hypothesis that is a best guess, meaning you have to take a guess as to what causes that phenomena. Once again, make sure that your hypothesis is testable, because if it is not testable, well then, it is a hypothesis that nobody can prove, and in the end, it'll be forgotten. Testing. To carry out experiment to investigate and collect data. Now, when you want to carry out this investigation, what is really essential now is that you can test your hypothesis using variables. And we're talking about the manipulated variable, responding variable, and constant variable. Analyzing and interpreting data. Once a scientist has tested and probably retested the initial hypothesis, it is now time to explain or interpret the findings of the experiment. So you've done your variables, you've done your experiment, you've collected your data, now it's time to explain it. To explain the trends you find in your data or to explain the lack of trends you find in your data. Once you're able to explain and discuss this data, we are closer 
to answering the question that came about as a result of the initial observation. Conclusion A conclusion is often just an idea or possibility. A scientific theory must go through rigorous examination and testing over time. So finally, at the end, you'll come up with a conclusion. The conclusion will give you an idea whether we are on the right track or on the wrong track. But before a hypothesis can become a theory or a law, we need to do many, many more scientific investigations. We will try to apply what we have learned. Pendulum wall clock. A pendulum is used as its time base. Since the time of invention, until about 1930, clocks using pendulum movements were the most accurate. The swing of the pendulum depends on the gravity and the length of the pendulum inside the clock. The length of the pendulum can be adjusted by turning the screw attached at the bottom of the pendulum. What is the problem statement? Answer. The longer the pendulum, the longer will be the period and slower is the wall clock. So, we've had a look at our pendulum and our question was, what is the problem? What affects this pendulum? The pendulum is affected by the length of the pendulum. We make a hypothesis. We say that the longer the pendulum, the longer the period of oscillation of the pendulum, which means the slower the clock will move. Now, it's a question of testing this hypothesis. So the hypothesis again, the longer the pendulum, the longer is the period of oscillation. Next, we need to plan an experiment. Aim, to investigate the relationship between the period and the length of a simple pendulum. Variables, the manipulated variable will be the length of the pendulum. The responding variable will be the period. Control variable, G. Acceleration due to gravity of the Earth. So we've got our aim and we've got our manipulated responding and controlled variables. The next, we need to get all our apparatus together. What about the apparatus needed? Well, what we have are all the apparatus sitting here next to me. We need a pendulum bob. We have a pendulum bob down here. We need a string. We have a string. We need a meter rule in order to measure the length of the pendulum. We have that. We need a stop clock in order to measure the length or the time for the oscillation. And finally, we need a retort stand with a clamp attached to the top so that we can hang our pendulum. So we've got all our apparatus and we are almost ready to do the investigation. Planning the procedure. Procedure. A string is tied to a pendulum bob. The pendulum bob is swung to one side. At a suitable position of the bob, example left hand side, the stop clock is pressed to start. After 20 swings, the stop clock button is pressed to stop. The time for the 20 swings is recorded. The length of the pendulum is measured and recorded. So this is how we're going to do the investigation. So let's begin. Here we have our pendulum bob. So I'll just move the meter ruler because we don't need it at the beginning. And here we have our stop clock. Now I'm going to move the pendulum bob through a couple of degrees, release it, let it start swinging. Once it's evenly swinging, I'm going to start the clock and record the time for 20 oscillations. So let's do it. I'm going to move the pendulum bob just a few centimeters, a few degrees. I'm going to release it. Let it start swinging evenly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, it's gone 20 oscillations and I've got a time. I record the time. 
Now I need to record the length of the pendulum bob. So I take back the meter ruler, I place it right here next to the pendulum bob. We want to record the length from the middle of the string to the middle of the bob. And I have a length of 40 centimeters. So those are my first two values. I have the length, I have the time. Now, we want to continue on. So let's go back to the slide. The length of the pendulum is reduced and step two to five are repeated for five readings. Then we're going to plot a graph on graph paper of T squared on the Y axis against the length. So what we're going to do is repeat the experiment for different lengths. We're going to shorten the pendulum by five centimeters each time and then do more readings. Now before I would do that, for accuracy's sake, I'm going to repeat this so that I get an average reading for each of them. This will just make the experiment even more accurate. Recording the results. So if you look at the table that we've got, we've got the length listed in the first column. We've got reading one and reading two and the average reading for the oscillation. We've got the period and then we have the period squared. To analyze the results, draw a graph to find out the relationship between the variables. A graph of t squared against l is plotted. The slope of the line is t squared over l, which equals 2 pi squared over g. This is an example of a graph we should get. Make sure that the graph you do has got the correct scale for both the y and x axis. Write a conclusion about the graph. T squared is directly proportional to the length L of the pendulum. The value of G is calculated using the formula. G equals 9.62 ms negative 2. So once you've drawn your graph, you make a conclusion that the oscillation period T is proportional to L. And now this is what we were saying at the beginning. The longer the pendulum, the longer the period of oscillation. Question 1. Hypothesis is a statement that A. Must be testable B. Is established based on everyday experiences C. Is a guess that is correct D. Provide an answer to a problem So what is a hypothesis? Remember, your hypothesis has to be based on three things. Your own experiences as a scientist previous knowledge from other scientists that you might find from a journal or an article, or a best guess. But in the end, the hypothesis must be testable. If it is not testable, it is not really a hypothesis. What is your answer? Let's have a look. The answer is A. Hypothesis is a statement that must be testable. Let's try another question. Which attitude is not a positive scientific attitude? A. Curiosity B. Critical mindedness C. Innovative inventions D. Creativity and innovative So which of these are the correct skills that you the scientists are supposed to have? Have you thought about it? Write down your answer. Let's check the answer. The answer is C. Innovative inventions. Invention is not an attitude. Innovative, yes, but not invention. Let's try another question. Which variable must be changed first before other variable is measured or recorded? So what is the variable that we change during the course of an experiment? What do we call this variable? If you put down your answer, let's have a look. Answer B, manipulated variable. Summary, scientific investigation requires scientific skills. Your scientific skills are things like observation, 
You need to be able to observe phenomena around you and then question them based on your curiosity. Why do they happen? What causes it to happen? How does it happen? Scientific method. Scientific method involves, after you've made an observation, you come up with a problem statement. After you've made your problem statement, you come up with a hypothesis that is testable. Once you have a hypothesis that is testable, you need to plan your investigation, pick the correct variables, come up with the apparatus you need for the experiment. Then, you need to plan the investigation, meaning you have to list out your procedure. In your procedure, it must be clearly stated what is it you are measuring, what is it that is the manipulated variable and that is being changed. You need to collect your data, put them into correct tables. You need to draw a graph if you possibly can, discuss and explain the data that you've collected. Finally, you need to create a conclusion based on your scientific investigation. Scientific attitude and moral values. A scientific attitude is one of curiosity, where you want to find out the cause for a particular phenomena. Moral attitudes are things like dedication, being disciplined when you're doing the experiment, repeating experiments, not making up results, not cheating results, not copying results. These are not the correct attitudes of a scientist. So remember, when you're doing an investigation, do it correctly, make sure your procedures are set out, and make sure when you do your experiment, you do it with the utmost dedication and you're always aware of your ultimate goal which is to test the hypothesis that you made. That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.